Greedy developers, corrupt commissioners, trophy wives, and tourists are all fair game when it comes to the savvy, satirical shows created by Rick Compton and Betsy Bennett. For more than 10 years, the comedic team of Compton and Bennett has poked fun at the absurdities of life in Southwest Florida, spoofing the silly and the serious in shows like A Cracker at the Ritz and How to Succeed in Naples Without Really Trying. There's something really visceral when you sing about things that people are familiar with, day-to-day -day things, local things. The reaction from the audience is personal. We think that that oftentimes it's because we're actually saying the things that these people are afraid to say out loud. The two veteran performers discovered their harmonic and comedic chemistry while performing in the Naples Players production of They're Playing Our Song. After the show closed, they put together a cabaret act, but their quick-witted quips lampooning life in Southwest Florida soon upstaged their cabaret classics. So eventually I said to Rick, I said, listen, you know what I want to do? I want to make sure that we have a whole evening of nothing but our original funny satire stuff. And he looked at me and went, a whole evening? <laughs> 30 songs, my God. <laughs> oh my God. How can we possibly do that? <laughs> and uh, so we did it. We wrote, we wrote them all up because people were buying that and they weren't buying our Jazz Standards right. Act. Betsy comes to it more legitimately, through, to satire more legitimately than I do. She comes to it through um, a strong background in theater. I am just basically the smart ass from the back of the classroom. Uh, so, but you combined those two things, and it's turned out that we're able to do this. Finding topics ripe for ridicule proved easy, and the pair began writing songs like A Ton and a Half of Cadillac Steel, which was later featured on NPR's Car Talk. She's 93 and she's behind the wheel A man's most powerful automobile Like a giant locomotive on four big wheels It's a ton and a half of Cadillac steel I got it at the Vos! Paint the heath! <laughs> After performing as a duo for more than eight years, the partners were invited to perform at the new Norris Center in Naples, and the humorist began writing bigger shows, featuring four people and a small band. The partners now create a new, original, full-scale show every year, in addition to performing as a duo in smaller venues. After more than a decade of creating clever caricatures of life in Southwest Florida, these irreverent humorists still find plenty to poke fun at. Every year, when we start to do a show, we think, you know, what, what can we, we've already written about everything that can be said about tourists and snowbirds and crooked commissioners and, and competent newspapers. We've already said everything, but then as soon as we do it, as soon as we say that, like a whole new litany of things. I mean, this, this community is, is, is so, and I'm talking about Southwest Florida, not just, not just Naples certainly, but Southwest Florida is rife with irony. Both Compton and Bennett are formerly educated in theater and music and follow tried and true theatrical traditions when planning a show. We know about storytelling. We know that a story is supposed to begin at a certain place, it's supposed to go to a certain place, certain challenges, certain icons need to be used, certain archetypes need to be used, and we outline the show basically based upon this traditional thing. And the outline becomes a list of the scenes that we need to write. In Compton's custom design studio in Naples, the team begins working on a program for the Collier County Democratic Club. So, All right, so the anthem for the Democratic Party. Yeah. All right, so we know, um, we know it's got to be uplifting. Well, what do we want to say? That, the, that we have control, we have the... Um, that they can affect their future. We, we can make it happen. Yeah. Yeah, we want to really give, give power. Power. Power, yes, right. Power. Right. So should we in the first verse encourage them to go out and invent voting machines? <laughs> <laughs> okay, try this. We, we have the power, we have the power to change the world. As ideas bounce back and forth, a well-worn rhyming dictionary offers additional inspiration. Light is shining through. Through is a fertile rhyme. Goo. Ew. Okay, people look to the horizon, the light is shining through. Okay. Da -da 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 -da. Wait, wait. It all depends on me and you. It's shining through, all right. The future depends on me and you. That's the, that's the end of the verse, all right? That's the end of the first verse. Once the team has written a rough draft of the lyrics, 
The creative process continues at the piano. I play the piano and understand orchestration. So it falls to me to try and express the idea musically, but what happens is, is I, don't, I don't say, okay, Betsy, you go take a break, I'm gonna write a song and you come back. I'll sit down and I'll plunk a melody. I have ideas, you know, and I'll, I'll bring up an idea. No, I don't like that there, and I it's close. <laughs> you know, it's close. I hear that a lot. We're on the right track, but it's not there. I'm picky. Wait. Uh, <laughs> that give and take of ideas generates a creative energy that sparks even more ideas as the partners fine-tune their show for the Democratic Club. It's friends, foes, alliteration. Our friends right, 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 right. turn to foes. Are our foes sold? Let's try it. Friends, friends, we. And Dick, when our rights disappear and we're all up the creek, when the friends turn to foes and the earth is too sick. All right, that's it. That's when it. One more time. Turn to foes. Actually, shooting ideas off another person, sometimes by having one rejected, it pulls you to another one that's even better. There is a nice creative tension, but I think that we're richer for it. Once the team is satisfied with a song is recorded and transferred onto CDs that are offered for sale during their shows. Bennett also creates PowerPoint presentations that serve as colorful and clever backdrops during performances. Although their satirical social commentary occasionally offends, the humorist can't resist poking fun at the real-life foibles of politicians and public figures. Wouldn't you think that they did something first? Well, yeah. And we just encapsulated it? Exactly. Exactly. We just showed the inanity or the, the idiocy. It's not just individuals, it's, it's stereotypes. And we exploit stereotypes as well. And oftentimes individuals will see themselves within that stereotype and, and feel more offense than what maybe they're justified to. Some people, however, are flattered to be mentioned in a Compton and Bennett song. We did our show this year featured a lead character by the name of Jack Rake It In Again. And people, somebody made the observation that his name sounds remarkably like Jack Antaramian, a, a, a successful and well-respected developer within right. Southwest Florida. But lo and behold, the closing night of our show, here comes Jack Antaramian, not just him and his wife, but he bought his grandkids. <laughs> you know, I would like my obituary to read, you're nobody until Compton and Bennett have poked fun at you. All joking aside, the partners hope their tongue-in-cheek songs and skits offer a chance to laugh at ourselves and to see the sillier side of life. I think if it makes them think a little about, um, about what's going on and that it's a different, fresh way to look at it, I think that that's enough. If we've affected them that way to make them actually think or laugh or touch them in some way, I, I like that because it has affected them. For Arts Edition Primetime, I'm Lynn Howard Fraser.